Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to salvage the parts off of a gauge auto set plane and turn it into a jointer. Now the gauge auto set plane I'm using pretty much has a body that is past the point of repair. The sides are popping off and being held on by screws. It's missing chunks. It's completely twisted. So what I want to do is save the parts and put them on a longer body turning it into a jointer. Now I know that this plane looks weird and at the end of the video, I'll explain to you what all these different hand holds are for and why I designed it this way. The other thing I wanna mention is if you want to see the step-by-step -step process of how I made this plane, feel free to check out my Patreon where you can see everything, including a mallet exploding in my face. But all right, let's dive in. I changed my mind after starting to edit this footage because there was over 11 hours of me putting this plane together. So instead of just having you guys sit through 20 minutes of me like sped up building this plane and some music, I'm going to talk about why I designed this plane and why I picked the design choices, etc. So my go-to plane for edge jointing is a Miller's Falls number 11, which is equivalent to a Stanley five and a quarter. So it is the width of a number three and it is in between the length of a four and a five. I like this for edge jointing narrow boards because when you get to a number seven or a number eight, even a number six, they're wide and it can be cumbersome if you're trying to focus on narrow boards. In my opinion, the narrower the plane is on the edge of the board, the more accurate you're going to be with it versus having this gigantic iron and a lot of plane hanging off the sides. The only issue I run into with the Miller's Falls number 11 or the Stanley five and a quarter is that it's just not long enough for edge jointing long boards. It's great for shorter boards, but when you get to long boards, it's going to take forever. There are no plane manufacturers that have ever made what I would consider a seven and a quarter. If I could get the width of either a number two iron or a one and three quarters iron with the length of something between a seven and an eight, I would be in heaven. It would be perfect for me, but that doesn't exist. Um, I hope eventually a plane manufacturer would make one because I see a ton of benefits when it comes to edge jointing narrow boards with that size of a plane. So because that doesn't exist, I decided to design my own and to make my own. I wanted to make it with a wooden body because, well, I'm not a machinist, but also because of the weight. I like that it's going to be lighter than a number seven or a number eight, so it's easier for me to use. If you don't know, I have issues with my hands. So holding onto a plane that only has two handholds, it ends up hurting me um, and I can't use the plane for long. So with this plane, I have multiple handholds that are ergonomic to me. So I can use the two closer handles. If I'm working on a shorter board, I can move my hands out. If I'm working on a longer board, I can turn it around and pull it. It's got a lot of options for me. So for example, if I'm having issues with my left hand, I can switch to a different handhold position and be okay. Um, my right hand, if I'm having issues, I can switch it around. So it gives me multiple options for how my body feels that day. Now, why didn't I just go with a full wooden plane? I, I could have just bought a wooden jointer plane. Well, I had one before, and to be honest, I'm not good at the tap tap of the iron, um, specifically for adjusting the depth. When it comes to lateral, I tend to be okay, but the depth, on a jointer plane, I would like to take fine shavings and I practiced with it for months and I wasn't able to get the kind of shavings I wanted. So taking the hardware out of a gauge auto set plane gives me the metal depth adjust, adjustment and all of the confidence in the metal parts there just on a wooden body. Um, I'm also a huge fan of transitionals. I like them because I like wooden bodies, but I need the metal adjuster. So that's kind of the rundown as to why I designed this plane and why I picked the choices that I made. On that note, woodworking is custom. Not everybody has the same wants and needs. Not everybody has the same opinions on tools. Sometimes there's something that you need specific to you that doesn't exist. So don't be afraid to tackle a project like this. Um, I found the gauge auto set plane at an antique store for like 10 bucks. I got the blank. I think the blank was like 40 bucks and then I built it. I just went for it. So don't be afraid to do something like that and make something that's custom to you, whether that's for comfort, for need, for whatever. Just don't be afraid to tackle a project like this. And don't worry about how it looks. Not everything needs to be pretty and perfect all of the time. And if you guys follow my channel, you know that I, I don't go for pretty and perfect all of the time. This plane looks weird. It's got weird shapes. It's got weird angles. It's got weird indents. It's a weird looking plane, but it's exactly what I need. And it's perfect for what I plan on using it for. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. Again, if you wanna see the full video of like the process of how I made this plane, check out my Patreon channel. And again, don't be afraid to tackle projects with it.
have fun, enjoy the process, and don't worry about what it looks like. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good day.